Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another review. This review is very long, <laughs> a very extensive review for the new Picasso AI adapter. This adapter features full-blown Android. It does also have access to wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. In another video I did, people were wondering how they can get wireless Android Auto, and this adapter right here will give you that. This video is very long, so there are video chapters at the bottom of the screen. You can click on those chapters and go to different sections of the video. Is sectioned off between wireless Android Auto, wireless CarPlay, and the various apps that work with this device. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump straight into the car and get right into it. So you join me inside the car. This is the Picasso adapter right here. I've already shown B-roll footage of it, but I just wanna show it off again because I really, really enjoy this adapter. Now the previous adapter that I had was this one right here from Picasso. This adapter is cool and I liked it for its purpose of just being something you can use to watch Netflix or anything in your car. I thought this was a cool adapter, but this one here is just so much better. This one, this new adapter basically replaces the adapter I just showed you, which is the previous one, and this right here, which gives you wireless CarPlay. I do enjoy this, so if you just want wireless CarPlay, get this. If you want wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, and a built-in Android system in the car that lets you download basically any app you want, get this adapter because it works so well. Now, wireless Android Auto is interesting in this because it works really, really well on my Galaxy S9. My Galaxy S9 is still running Android 10, not Android 11, of course, not Android 12. My Pixel 4 XL, which is running Android 12, it does not work at all. It, it's not really functional. It will let you first connect to Bluetooth and it will show wireless Android Auto on the screen. But then when you get out the car and get back into the car, it just doesn't want to connect. It keeps trying to connect to CarPlay instead of doing Android Auto. Then when it does try to connect to Android Auto, it just won't find the connection and do it. Not sure if it's just not compatible with Android 12 or if it's something else. So if you're gonna get this adapter, please be mindful if you're on Android 12 and you have a Pixel, there could be some issues with that. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and simulate connecting wireless Android Auto for the very first time. Like I said, I've been using this for the past like two months now. So what you do is you get your phone here and this will constantly broadcast a Bluetooth signal. You get your phone here, you then go to your Bluetooth, the Bluetooth menu, and you find the adapter. It's gonna be labeled Picasso AI, once that pops up, or just Picasso, not the AI part. You click on it, it'll pair it, it asks you a couple of questions like Bluetooth does, you say yes, allow the contacts and that once that's connected you'll see this blue dot here for bluetooth then you want to go over to speed play you click on speed play this is how you're going to get wireless android auto and wireless carplay to connect it's then going to be waiting waiting then it's going to start to look for the wireless android auto as you can see there now i'm going to go back home here and you'll see in my notifications that wireless android auto it says continue on your car screen it's trying to connect to it so what's going to happen is it's going to actually boot out of it. It's going to like crash, basically. On the screen here, you'll see that it says wireless Android Auto has been detected, blah, blah, blah. So it's going to quit out here. You click on this again. It's going to try to connect to it. And then it will actually make the connection. Or it didn't. It booted out of it again. So we're going to, there we go. So we click on it now and then it goes to connection. You hit continue and wireless Android Auto is here and it's working very, very well. Okay, that's showing my address. This is your wireless Android Auto here. You do have access to your Samsung messages. You have access to your Google messages and all the other apps that show up. It's, base, it's just basic wireless. It's just basic CarPlay just in a wireless form. The audio still works great. I will say that I noticed less lag by switching between tracks on Android wireless Android Auto versus wireless Apple CarPlay. Not really sure what that is, but it just seemed to be a little bit quicker to switch songs wirelessly on the Android counterpart. So we're gonna go here and you can see your, your music still works. My phone isn't connected to the internet, so it's not gonna be there, but this is just how it all works. You go back home, it runs in the same way that wireless, that wired Android auto works. It just seems to run the same at about, you know, maybe 30 Hertz or so. It doesn't really seem to want, run any faster. Android auto has never really ran any faster to me, whereas wired Apple CarPlay does seem to run at about 60 Hertz. One thing I will say, and this, this goes to both wireless Android auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. The steering wheel buttons work to go left and right on tracks, but they do not work to force a command. Hitting the say command button in this car with this adapter and wireless Android Auto or CarPlay does not bring up Siri, nor does it bring up the Google Assistant on wireless Android Auto. It will bring up the Google Assistant from the adapter. As you can see, it takes over the screen and it does that. If you do, okay, if you do want the Google Assistant from the Android Auto 
counterpart here, you can either say, hey, Google, like it just registered me saying there, which I didn't even say, or you can click this button here to bring up the Google Assistant. You can send your messages and things like that. So that's how you want to bring up the Google Assistant on Android Auto with this adapter. You have to do it on the screen or use the voice command because using the button in the car will bring up the Google Assistant from the adapter itself. So once I actually got Android Auto to connect to the Galaxy S9, I never had any problems. It never crashed. The audio never went out. It just worked really, really well. And it connected every single time I wanted to connect. I got into the car. I kept, I didn't even take my phone out and do all this stuff. You just keep your phone in the car. The phone's Bluetooth will connect to the adapter automatically. And then you open up speed play and you're good to go. And there is a setting in speed play. If you want speed play to pop up first without having to go through the interface, if you just want speed play to pop up for Android Auto or CarPlay, there's a setting in the speed play app so that it's the first thing that pops up when you, when the adapter boots up, it'd be the first thing that pops up. So you bypass that whole interface. You don't have to open the app up. It just opens up SpeedPlay and then you get access to Android Auto or CarPlay. For wireless CarPlay, it works much in the same way as it does for wireless Android Auto. So what we're gonna do here is connect the Bluetooth first. So if you click on this, you wanna go to your Bluetooth settings and you wanna connect the Bluetooth of the Picasso device. Like I said, the Picasso device is always broadcasting a Bluetooth signal. So you click on Bluetooth here, you do pair it, you do allow, all that stuff, it's then connected. And you can see there, it's, it's not even showing the video that I have playing in the background. So then you wanna go to your speed play app. As you can see there too, Bluetooth is connected. You go see your speed, speed play app and it will then search for CarPlay because it knows an iPhone is connected to it. It will search for CarPlay. You, you, this will pop up on the screen saying use CarPlay. You say yes, boom. It will then pop up on the screen, Lenny's iPhone SE and everything shows up the way it's supposed to and it works. So this is wireless CarPlay. Wireless CarPlay works in the same way that it does wired in. The only difference is that these labels at the bottom are encased in a rectangle that has these rounded corners and the battery indicator up here is there where it's not there with wireless car with wired car plug because there's no need to have a battery indicator so everything is here i can see my dashboard here on the left side of the screen everything works like it's supposed to i think it does run at a lower frame rate or hertz than it does when wired in wired in seems to run more at a consistent 60 hertz smoother than it does uh a wireless like this but everything works correctly all the apps work and they function there is a slight delay when it comes to sounds and things being picked up the the lag isn't really there when it comes to android auto but when it comes to carplay it's only seems to be there when you hit play it's odd right watch it's a bit of a lag and you can see down at the bottom the numbers were already moving when i hit pause it pauses instantly when i hit next song and look, it's a little bit of a lag like the next song showed up on here it was already loaded it was already the numbers were already moving but the audio hadn't come in but hitting pause pauses pretty quickly but you know it's just a little bitty little nitpicky things that i've just noticed while using this the Google Assistant from the adapter will pop up when you hit the say command button on your car this does not route Siri to the button here. So if I wanted to use Siri, I can't hit the button, watch. That opens the Google Assistant up, it backs out of CarPlay. If I want to use Siri, I have to either use the command or you hold right here and this brings up Siri. Or you hold right here, that's take two, and this brings up Siri. Why is Siri not popping up? odd so you saw that in real time i couldn't get siri to work from the home screen that was odd now this phone is this phone here in particular is running the older version of ios 15 not 15.2 i'm 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 pretty sure i'm using my other phone to record the video so i can't do carplay at the same time but i am pretty sure that it worked correctly from the home screen on 15.2 than it did on on this older version of 15 which is 15.0.2 um so, but you saw that in real time. I was trying to figure out exactly how to get it to work. But Siri does work here in the app 
you know, by, by pushing on this down here and holding this, it works. But for some reason, at the home on the home screen, it just it wouldn't work. But that's how you get Siri to activate on this. You can't use the steering wheel button. You have to use it through the system itself. So let's talk about the interface in general. I really, really like this interface. I think this is a better interface UI compared to the original one that I reviewed before, the other Picasso adapter you've seen in the other video. This seems to mimic Apple CarPlay, and I really, really like that. It has like the best of both worlds. So you do have your apps here on the side. You like previously used apps, those pop up for quick access if you wanna just go to those. You then have a row of apps right here. You have your home screens with all your apps here. You can flick through. And you have an app drawer here if you just wanted to click on that real quick and go to an app that was maybe too far away on the home screen you didn't want to swipe all the way through. When you do touch the screen, you get this uh, overlay here that allows you to go back, go home, and this on the left allows you to move it around. This is really intuitive because if you hold this down, it will then bring up your app switcher. And you can see the animations on this are just really, really nice. Like there's just a, a bit more attention to detail with this adapter because it has more power than the previous one. So just really quickly, you know, holding down on that brings up this here. It has a little bounce to it, a nice little flow to it. Look at that, it's a nice little bounce to it. If you hold this, it will then bring up split screens. You can split screen, you know, if you want the settings menu up and then, I don't know, say uh, YouTube music. You can split screen like that. This adapter is just, it's just really, really nice. It's so much better than the other one. I do have this running off of hotspot on my phone. You can see here, it does have notification dots because this actually kind of mimics a phone. This does have a modem inside of it. You can actually stick in a SIM card. If you just had like an extra SIM card plan and you didn't want to use hotspot from your phone, you can stick that SIM card into this adapter and use it that way. And if I'm not mistaken, it does mimic a Samsung phone. So if you did that, you probably wouldn't tip off anybody at AT&T or Verizon or anything thinking that you have this into a device that's like a hotspot, then they would terminate your account. I can't say for sure, but when I did log in to my Google account, it displayed this as a Samsung phone and not as some sort of a hotspot. So you might be okay putting in your SIM card that isn't a hotspot plan. But like I said, just don't, don't, you know, don't, don't take my word for it on that. Uh, just kind of speculation at the moment with that. So this does use a micro SIM, which is really interesting to me, interesting choice because you have this adapter that's a little bit forward facing when it comes to technology or a bit future proof, I guess you can say, it has USB-C, not USB-A or, or micro USB, but then you have micro SIM. Um, so you, you can just buy those little micro SIM adapters, which I have one right here. These little adapters here, I'm not sure if the camera will focus on it. You can buy one of these little adapters here and it'll work just fine. You can stick it in there and you have access to the network. When I had this connected to the network, it was actually getting really nice speeds. I think I did take video of it. The speeds are actually really good. and Everything was working fine like it's supposed to. This does have a messaging app. So if you did have a phone SIM inside of it, you can reply to messages, bring up the keyboard and type. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. I did have to do a reboot on this um, to test some stuff out. Like I said, with the Pixel not working correctly with uh, wireless Android Auto, so I don't have the messages popped up anymore on here. But if you do have a SIM card connected to this or inside of this, I should say, you will get text messages and phone calls right here on the screen. So it's very interesting. So I want to go ahead and now do a brief synopsis of some of these apps that I've used and how they look and how they function. This won't be as in-depth as it was with the last video because the apps work better in some cases and about the same in other cases so let's start off with uh youtube music youtube music looks the same as it did with the last adapter you know things are a little bit big but it's fine you know you scroll past them and, and you have access to all of your things when you do click on a video like this or you click on a song i should say if you play that song which i'll turn this down if you play that song here um it the Album art will look like this. It's a full screen album art. It, it takes over the whole screen and it is kind of zoomed in. So right now you're just kind of looking at an abdomen. Um, if you do want to click on the video, which this song doesn't have a video for, let me find a song that has a video. If you do click on the video part, it will then quick, it will then reload the video like it does on uh, YouTube music on the phone and on the website. But this is what you get for your album art. So it's not really the best for you, but you know, it works and it, it, it works well. So using Apple Music is about the same as it is with the other adapter. Things function, they look nice, you know, things are, they're not really too big or too small for the most part. Um, but Apple, well, this is gigantic, but Apple Music just doesn't really work well with these adapters. It's just a 
thing that I'm noticing. So I do tend to use YouTube music while I'm um, using this adapter uh, in the car this way if I'm not using CarPlay or Android Auto because Apple Music just doesn't really scale well. So let me click on here and I'll just click on this and just play a random song. As you can see here, it's just cut off. Things are just cut off and the songs kind of just load a little slowly. Apple Music is just kind of slow in general, to be completely honest, on both Android and iOS. But, you know, it it's just not the best. If your main music service is Apple Music, you probably would want to stick to using CarPlay with this adapter and use this for the video portion, which I'm going to go ahead and switch over to now. This adapter compared to the last one, this one has access to YouTube TV. The last adapter did not have access to YouTube TV. So that's a big win for me because I, I mean, I don't watch YouTube TV that often because I don't really watch traditional TV that much. But when I do, and it's important for me to watch YouTube TV, I would like to have YouTube TV and this does have it. Boom, it loads up. Things look nice on the home screen. So say I wanted to watch uh, The Price is Right. Really enjoy The Price is Right. I actually do really enjoy The Price is Right. So you click on it, it loads your video up. It doesn't take too long to load up, but I am here at the house hot spotting off of AT&T, which the signal isn't the best, but I have this really cool plan, which one day I'll I'll give more details on that plan. It's, it's probably the best plan in wireless and it's gonna be a great video. So, um, you know, it's loading up, it loaded up in, I think, like 480p. But if I did want to switch on over to 720, or, or actually, no, so that's the thing with this. This does not allow you to go past 480p. The only thing on YouTube TV that does not scale well is the live portion. The live portion here just doesn't really look all that. Oh, hold on now. They must have. This is looking a lot better. No, 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 no. It, it just gets cut off. As you see, as you keep scrolling, it just continues to kind of get cut off. Some of the titles get cut off. Like we see here, that's that's really cut off. You can't even tell what the name of that show is. The library looks good. Everything from the library scales well here too. So as you can see, the these are the recordings. Uh, Yeah, everything just kind of, everything looks fine except for the live portion. So I'm going to click on... HBO Max. HBO Max is the one the one app that I had issues with with the last adapter and it is the one app that I have issues with with this adapter as well. It just it's too big like this is huge doesn't really scale well. So if I want to click on a video and watch if I wanted to watch like uh, Kong versus Godzilla or whatever the name of the movie is I click on it and it seems like it's going to load and then nothing happens at least with the last adapter it loaded even though it was a little finicky and loaded, but with this adapter, it just doesn't work. Um, maybe some updates to the HBO Max app will help it to run better with this adapter, but if you're getting this adapter with HBO Max in mind, I would say to hold off. Now let's move on to Philo. There's no issues with scaling at all with this app. Everything looks nice. It's just like everything is just, per it fits perfectly on here. If I click on the guide, the guide shows up. If I click on top, all this stuff just shows up. Beautiful design, rounded corners. I love my rounded corners. All of my recorded stuff is here. As you can see, the only reason I have Philo is just for G4. So if you're a big Philo person, you're going to love the way that this app looks. And I will go ahead and even, um, if I hold down, I think it's holding down is how you do it. I don't know. There we go. So you click on here and I want to watch, continue watching uh, live TV, which I think the show is on. You'll see it'll load up. Don't worry about how the speed of the loading. Like I said, I'm here at my house using AT&T. And, AT &T, and this is loading up, if I'm not mistaken, in a very, very nice HD. It just looks really nice to me. I think that this is loading up in a higher resolution than what YouTube TV loads. So you see here, it loads up. Lip cert in sync. It's just a really, really nice app. So now let's talk about Paramount Plus. Literally just the other day, it was working just fine. Now I go back into it to record this video and it's not working correctly. These large portions here that take up the top part of the screen, they're just off. They're off and they're off which, with whatever app or show you go into. So I'll go into 1883 here and it's just still off. Um, it's just kind of there, but the play button and stuff does work. However, what's not working is the audio. So just the other day, it was working just fine. I was watching stuff and it's kind of hard to hit the play button. As you can see, it's kind of hard to hit the play button. So I'll just click on the episodes here and just play one of them. The audio was working just fine. Do, 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 and did all that stuff. And now it's not. 
And I don't know what changed. <laughs> the app is not like the app was updated because it doesn't have constant internet connection. And it's just not working anymore. Audio is simply isn't working. So I don't know. Maybe a future update for Paramount Plus will work. Maybe I need to uninstall the app and reinstall it and sign back in and do all that stuff, which I don't want to do at the moment for this recording. Uh, but as you can see here, like I said, it was working and now it's not working correctly. But the video does work. Okay, so let's go back to the first home screen and talk about me, my most used apps while using this device, YouTube and Twitch. This is where I get most of my entertainment from and they both work really well. So if you're a huge YouTube user, a huge Twitch user, you're going to really like this adapter. Let's start off by showing you Twitch. And with the last adapter, I talked about how well Twitch worked and it works the same way with this adapter. It's just very, very nice. There's no real issues with any of this. Everything scales correctly. You click on discover, discover looks totally fine. You click on browse, browse is fine. Everything just looks and functions the way it's supposed to. So if I click on my continue watching here, it'll just play my content. I can you know, do the gift sub. If I want to do the gift sub, I can see my chat over here on the right side. Audio works. And then leans down. Audio comes through friends. loud and clear. It's chat is here. If I double tap, it gets rid of the chat. Pixel circus, I can click on pixel circus. Pixel circus. And it'll load everything up and it just works like it's supposed to. Twitch works really well in here. It worked really well with the last adapter and it continues to work well with this adapter. If I wanted to chat, I could click on this and actually type a chat message. Like everything, the way Twitch works on your phone, it works in the exact same way on here and it works really, really well. So we'll go ahead and get out of Twitch and we'll go straight to YouTube. YouTube in the same way works like it does with the previous adapter. Everything functions um, nicely here. Nothing's really too big or too small. This, the video it's works. Like I'm doing what's called a remux. There's absolutely no degraded picture or audio. Audio works. Video works. Uh, if I click on this, but the last adapter, I can click the screen and make it small here. Of course, when you do that, though, this portion of YouTube is entirely too big. And that was the same with the previous adapter. So that's a little bit too big here. But you can get this view if you wanted to. You can look at comments. You can um, you can post the comment if you wanted to swipe down to get rid of the comments. Um, so, yeah, YouTube works the way it should. It plays videos nicely. It plays live streams nicely. It'll play your videos in 1080p quality. It'll load them up really quickly. YouTube's always been good at that. All right. So I want to talk about Google Maps. Google Maps, if you're going to use Maps in this car and listen to music at the same time, I would highly suggest you use Waze. Waze comes with this built in. Google Maps does as well. I highly suggest you use Waze because the audio routing, when you have music playing and then you switch over to Google Maps and use Google Maps, it seems to route the audio via this weird connection thingy. I don't know. It just sounds like the way Bluetooth calls sound on here and Bluetooth calls do not sound good on here. I'll turn this back up and you'll see the music will then go from sounding you know, nice and clear and having nice clarity, nice bass to being a Bluetooth call. It sounds really bad when I hit start on Google Maps. So here, here it is. <laughs> The audio seems to be routed to the front speakers and then it seems to just kind of lose all clarity. All, all the bit rate is gone. It just sounds really, really bad. This does not happen when you use Waze. Turn the audio sounds fine. Nothing ever happened to the audio like it did with the other thing. So let me uh, quit that of that. So as you can see there, the audio didn't change over like it does with Google Maps. With Google Maps, the audio seems to be routed like a phone call for some reason. With Waze, it's not doing that. So I would highly suggest if you're going to listen to music through the adapter, through YouTube Music or whatever app you're going to use, if you're going to do navigation along with that, I would highly suggest you use Waze instead of Google Maps. Now let's switch over to Prime Video. Prime Video is an app that I don't use too, too much, but when I do use it, I want it to work well, of course, and this seems to work well. So no issues with scaling here. Let me scroll a little bit. 
everything seems to scale well with Prime Video. Uh, nothing's too big, nothing's too small. It just works well when I go to the store. Everything here in the store, uh, everything works like it's supposed to. When I go to my channels, it just looks like it's supposed to. I don't have any issues with Prime Video. But if I go back home and I want to watch this, say this Christmas is canceled movie. Um, if I click on watch now, I just want to get past that to show you that the, the letterboxing and the pillar boxing of that video uh, doesn't happen when you're in the actual video plays. You can see this is just regular old letterbox because, you know, the way this movie was shot and delivered, but it takes up the full screen. Audio works. You saw how quickly it played, too. So that brings us to Netflix. Netflix is an interesting one with this adapter because it's not fully compatible. Netflix did come with the adapter. It was one of the included apps with the adapter. If I click on Netflix, it'll open up. It'll say a new version is found. Do you want to update? If I say OK, it takes me to the Play Store. Then it says this app is not available with this device. But if I click here and click cancel, it will go ahead and open up Netflix. So this is Netflix here. It's running an outdated version of Netflix and will not be updated. I don't think that's a real cause for concern because to be completely honest, Netflix doesn't really seem to ever block old apps from working. Like it happens, but I've seen Netflix, old, old versions of Netflix working on devices that haven't received an update for a very long time and Netflix still works. It seems Netflix is kind of lenient as far as how far back they allow the version number to go to still work with whatever device you're using to watch Netflix. So I don't think that's a real big cause for concern, the fact that this can't be updated. So this is the way Netflix looks on here. You scroll down here, you have all your shows. If I wanted to click on a show, I might continue watching. If I wanted to click uh, continue watching Nailed It or Arcane, let's just click watching, continue watching Arcane. There it is, it loads up and then it plays the content. Audio works. Uh, it's it's great. Netflix works the way that you would expect it to. There's no issues with the way Netflix works on here. The only thing about Netflix, like I said, is that it can't be it can't be updated. But I don't really see that being an issue anytime soon with this device. But the way I've seen Netflix work on old hardware and old app version numbers. All right. So this video is incredibly long, and to sum it all up, I really really like this device. I think this is a huge buy a strong buy, a two thumbs up buy from me. There are some apps that don't work properly, but I don't use those services so much and I laid it all out for you. So if you don't use those services so much, then please, by all means, buy this. Wireless Android Auto, wireless CarPlay, and access to the Google Play Store. I mean, there's nothing else that I can say. It's just a wonderful device. I've enjoyed my time with it. I'll be fully honest with you. I got this device to review for free from the company and the links are in the description to buy the device from Amazon. Those are Amazon affiliate links and I will get money from your purchase from Amazon itself, not from the company that made this product. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.